Hi, today we're going to be testing out ChatGPT. At this point, you've probably heard about it. Um, it's essentially going to take over everyone's job, and I just wanted to see how well it might do against the role of business analysis. For this video, uh, I've created three prompts that are kind of the, the types of prompts or the types of explanations or context you might get when you're starting a project. So it's not all the little details. It's not you know, everything that you've captured at, at this point. It's really just what you might start out with on a project. And for this, I just want to test out how how ChatGPT might start a project and how you might benefit from using ChatGPT at the beginning of your project. So let's get into it with a couple of prompts here. The first prompt is one that is a pretty common prompt prompt um, when you're working with somebody to kind of test them out. It's kind of a case study scenario type thing that you might give in an interview. Uh, whether it's for a business analyst or a designer or whomever, that's, that's something you might start out with. So it's a pretty common one. Um, there's a lot of apps out there that already kind of meet this. Um, so I'm just curious to see what might come out of me sending ChatGPT to this prompt. So let's get into ChatGPT and give it a shot. So let me copy and paste this prompt. Hop into ChatGPT. Wow. Excellent. All right. Let's, so let's take a look at what was spit out. So I started with the prompt, create business requirements for the following project context. I want an application that I could use to plan a trip with my friends. It should help us coordinate our availability. It should help us book flights and hotels, and it should be able to help us book activities um, that we could do while we're on our trip. Um, this is a pretty bare bones prompt. You know, at this point, you know, we don't know why we're doing this or even the company we're, we're working for. However, ChatGPT did a actually really great job of kind of getting us started. So one, it named the project for us, um, Trip Planner. I'm wondering if that's because this is this scenario exists enough on the internet that it kind of gathered that this is what we're going for. Um, and it gave an overview, and this overview is essentially a summary of the prompt that I gave it. So that's uh, pretty nice, pretty like intelligent for you know a tool like this because as a BA, if you're creating this documentation, you would definitely want to start from there. Um, and then it breaks it down into essentially the different functions and capabilities that you'd probably need to have in a tool like this. So we have user re registration and authentication, trip creation, availability coordination, um, which is part of the prompt that I gave it, flights and hotel booking, activities planning, um, group communication, which I did not include in the prompt, um, budget management, which is interesting. I didn't include that, but that's definitely something you want to include. If you're booking a trip with friends and people have certain amounts that are willing to spend, that's probably something you'd want to include in the overall trip metadata or attributes. Notifications, didn't really think about that. User profiles, yeah, that makes sense. Security and privacy, absolutely. If you're going to be putting in personal information, if you're going to be booking flights and whatnot, obviously you're going to have payment information and things like that. Um, and the personal contact information of all your friends. So yeah, you're definitely going to want that to be secure and private. Um, payments integration, platform capability, and on and on and on. So this is actually really great. And if you were starting from scratch and some CEO or whoever was like, we need you to build this app, and you're like, where do I even get started? And you came with this, this would be a great start. You may not necessarily build all of these things, but if you were to start with this and say, hey, these are some features that I think could be super valuable in this application, um, you know, let's break it down and see like wh what functionalities we actually have at, at every feature level. You really could start a functional decomposition and create a pretty robust requirements document. So for this prompt, I definitely give it an A+, but since it's a pretty common prompt um, that you see all over the internet, um, I'm going to say, you know, so soft A, and we'll see what happens when we give it the next prompts. All right, next prompt. Now, this, as, as, at a high level, is a real project that I was on. Obviously, this is not a lot of details, um, but it is a, a true project that I was on. Um, that's a long time in my past, so I'm going to see how what it comes up with compares to what I actually ended up doing on that project. It looks like it's still going. So it looks like it's it went pretty robust. So let's let's see where it went here. Um, so this scenario was your assignments to integrate an existing online ordering tool, and this is a scenario that I do talk about in another video in a little bit more detail into companies into a company's existing ERP 
or enterprise resource planning tool, so an ERP tool. This application is used externally by resale um, partners um, where they place orders and manage software licenses for their customers. And it is also used internally as a kind of CRM or customer relationship management tool to manage those resale partners. So what did it come up with? Overview. So again, it um, summarized the prompt that I gave it and probably used better language than I did. So that's pretty cool. System capability, um, unified data management, uh, real-time synchronization, that's interesting, order pr placement and processing, um, license management, so again, it kind of went up to a high level and it said, okay, for a tool of this nature, what all categories of requirements are probably going to be necessary for you to um, create this application or essentially make this successful? And again, these are all things that as a business analyst, you definitely need to think about. So if you're a new business analyst on a project um, and you started with this, um, this what it spit back you would actually start off on a really great foot. Um, essentially, it'll allow you to ask really great questions right out of the gate. And this is with me giving it a very generic prompt, a very high level overview of what's happening. And if you were to start with this and just essentially go to your stakeholders and say, hey, you know, are systems compatible? Who, what stakeholders can help us determine the system compatibility of these, you know, two different software platforms? You're already going to start down the path of, you know, what are your constraints? What can you actually accomplish? Um, you know, how, how does the data exist um, with this um, unified data management to make sure, you know, the data from one system can seamlessly integrate with another? Real-time synchronization, you know, that essentially just means, you know, these two apps exist independently and each has data that the other needs. So if I'm in this tool and I need data from that tool, will I have everything that I need um, to do whatever I need, whether it's order processing or viewing an invoice, whatever? Um, available and how is that going to be available on and on and so forth so test two I would say another uh, hard pass on this one that it gave exactly what questions should should be asked when at a high level when you're gathering requirements it's not every nitty-gritty detailed requirement it's not going to help you write the exact user stories however it's going to definitely help you start asking the right questions right away um, and by using this language and asking the stakeholders and the different folks on the team, hey, what about reporting and analytics? What kind of reporting are you going to need out of this tool? Yeah, all these individuals are using it, but somebody's going to want to know what are the outputs of this? How is this you know, tool performing? That's something a lot of people forget to think about. But even here it says, hey, have you thought about reporting and analytics? So again, another pass for ChatGBT. Um, I don't know about writing the uh, detailed requirements, but at a high level to get your project started, another pass. And we'll give it one more example um, to see how it does um, and give it its next rating. So in this case, the organization needs a new customer portal, allowing customers to access and manage their B2B accounts. I need the system to allow customers to access applications within our firewall, access dispute, access and dispute invoices, create support tickets that inter and create support tickets that integrate with our service application. So let's see what happens. Again, this is another real project that I've been on. Obviously, again, the details are super high level, um, not nearly enough to really get down to it. But again, we'll see how ChatGPT does, ChatGPT does on getting started on this project. All right. So again, I think it's done a really great job. I, I think one of the hardest things for a new business analyst is understanding what questions they need, that they need to ask. Because when you ask anybody, what does a, bus a good business analyst do? It's that they ask good questions. They ask the right questions to get down to what the real problems are, what the real value is, um, and how we're going to solve it. And this, if you don't know what else to do or where else to start, and you're just given a project and, and you don't know where to take it, this will definitely set you on the right path, especially if it's in a domain that you don't quite understand and therefore you don't know yet what things matter, what questions to ask. This is going to definitely point you in the right direction. Um, so again, another win for ChatGPT in getting a business analyst started on a project. Um, I'm going to have to think through um, some other ways to test ChatGPT at, at kind of those lower level, like writing requirements, 
one thing that uh, I do caution all of you is that when you put something into ChatGPT, it kind of becomes public to ChatGPT. So do not put any proprietary information. You know, for a high-level prompt that I gave it with no um, company data, no real details on, you know, even the, the systems or tools that we're using, it gave me, like, good prompts to get started. So, you know, keep it at that high level. Keep it generic enough. Um, and see what ChatGPT can spit out, but don't get into trouble with your company for essentially giving away intellectual property to OpenAI. I hope that video was a little bit helpful in helping you understand how a business analyst could use ChatGPT to get started on a project. Um, if you have any other ideas for me on how I could test out ChatGPT and, and what capabilities it might have to help you uh, as a business analyst on a project let me know in the comments because i'm itching to try out a bunch of different things here and i'm still brainstorming all the th different things that i could try and of course if you have any other questions about business analysis in general let me know in the comments and i'll either answer you there or create a whole new video to answer your questions so subscribe to see your questions get answered and thanks for watching